the Anguttara Nikaya, Numerical Discourses, Book of the Fives, Suttas 101 to 110, Pasuvihara Vagga, The Section on Living at Ease, Sarajja Sutta, Apprehension, Bhikkhus, these five qualities bring about self-confidence within the noble disciple in training. What are these five? Here, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu possesses faith, is virtuous, learned, with aroused effort, and he is wise. Bhikkhus, for the bhikkhu who has such faith, no apprehension or insecurities are to be found, unlike the one who is lacking in faith. It is for this reason that this quality brings about self-confidence within the noble disciple in training. Bhikkhus, for the bhikkhu who is virtuous, no apprehension or insecurities are to be found, unlike the one who is lacking in virtue. It is for this reason that this quality brings about self-confidence within the noble disciple in training. Bhikkhus, for the bhikkhu who is so learned, no apprehension or insecurities are to be found, unlike the one who is lacking in learning. It is for this reason that this quality brings about self-confidence within the noble disciple in training. Bhikkhus, for the bhikkhu who has such aroused effort, no apprehension or insecurities are to be found, unlike the one who is lacking in effort. It is for this reason that this quality brings about self-confidence within the noble disciple in training. Bhikkhus, for the bhikkhu who has such wisdom, no apprehension or insecurities are to be found, unlike the one who is lacking in wisdom. It is for this reason that this quality brings about self-confidence within the noble disciple in training. Bhikkhus, these are the five qualities that bring about self-confidence within the noble disciple in training. Usankita Sutta Distrustful Bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the bhikkhu becomes distrustful and suspected as an evil bhikkhu, one who is not to be trusted, even though he may have good intentions. What are these five? Here, the bhikkhu frequently associates with by visiting prostitutes, widowed or women living alone, attractive girls, eunuchs or bhikkhunis. Bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the bhikkhu becomes distrustful and suspected as an evil bhikkhu, one who is not to be trusted, even though he may have good intentions. Mahachura Sutta, Worst Among Thieves Bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the worst among thieves waits in ambush, breaks into others' homes, plunders others' wealth and life savings, and even cuts off his victim's limbs to get what he wants. What are these five? Here, Bhikkhus, the worst among thieves hides in wait on unsuspected and bumpy terrains, in a dense thicket for cover, protected and well covered behind powerful friends. As he knows how to bribe and acts alone while committing his crimes. And how, Bhikkhus? Does the worst among thieves hide in wait on unsuspected and bumpy terrains? Here, Bhikkhus, 
The worst among thieves hides in terrains that are uneven in structure and topography, involving steep elevations, rivers that are hard to cross, bumpy and jagged cliffs and mountain slopes. It is in this way that the worst among thieves hides in wait on unsuspected and bumpy terrains. And how, Bikus, does the worst among thieves hide in a dense thicket for cover? Here, Bikus, the worst among thieves hides in an overgrowth of tall grass, densely crowded with trees, a cave, or in a great thick forest. It is in this way that the worst among thieves hides in a dense thicket for cover. And how, Bikus, does the worst among thieves hide, while protected and well covered behind powerful friends? Here, Bikus, the worst among thieves seeks protection from kings or their ministers, rulers and all those in the position of influence, as he reflects to himself. If anyone accuses me of anything, then the king or his ministers, and all those in the position of influence, will simply dismiss the case and rule in my favor. And so it happens, that if anyone accuses him of anything, then the king or his ministers, and all those in the position of influence, will simply dismiss the case and rule in his favor. It is in this way that the worst among thieves is protected and well covered behind powerful friends. And how, Bikus, does the worst among thieves know how to bribe? Here, Bikus, the worst among thieves is wealthy with an abundant supply of resources as he reflects to himself. If someone accuses me of something, I will settle the matter by offering him a hefty bribe and make it go away. And so it happens that if anyone accuses him of something, then he quickly settles the matter by offering him a hefty bribe and making it go away. It is in this way that the worst among thieves knows how to bribe. And how, Bikus, does the worst among thieves act alone while committing his crimes? Here, Bikus, the worst among thieves executes his attacks while neither telling nor involving anyone else. And what is the reason for this? He does so with the thought, May my secret plans remain secret, never leaking out or being known to others so that the treasures I reap will all be mine, none to be shared by an outsider. In this way, the worst among thieves acts alone while committing his crimes. Bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the worst among thieves waits in ambush, breaks into others' homes, plunders others' wealth and life savings and even cuts off his victim's limbs to get what he wants. In the same manner, Bhikkhus, the evil Bhikkhu, while possessing five qualities, lives by injuring and destroying himself, while being criticized and blamed by the wise, as he also accrues much demerit throughout. What are these five? Here, Bhikkhus, the evil bhikkhu hides in wait on unsuspected and bumpy terrains, in a dense thicket for cover, protected and well covered behind powerful friends, as he knows how to bribe and acts alone while committing his crimes. And how, bhikkhus, does the evil bhikkhu hide in wait on unsuspected and bumpy terrains? Here, bhikkhus, the evil bhikkhu engages in non-virtuous bodily actions, non-virtuous verbal actions, and non-virtuous mental actions. It is in this way that the evil bhikkhu hides in wait on unsuspected and bumpy terrains. And how, bhikkhus, does the evil bhikkhu hide in a dense thicket for cover? 
Here bhikkhus, the evil bhikkhu holds on to wrong view, grasping and attached to an extremist view. It is in this way that the evil bhikkhu hides in a dense thicket for cover. And how, bhikkhus, does the evil bhikkhu hide, while protected and well covered behind powerful friends? Here, bhikkhus, the evil bhikkhu seeks protection from kings or their ministers, rulers and all those in the position of influence, as he reflects to himself. If anyone accuses me of anything, then the king or his ministers, and all those in the position of influence, will simply dismiss the case and rule in my favor. And so it happens that if anyone accuses him of anything, then the king or his ministers, and all those in the position of influence, will simply dismiss the case and rule in his favor. It is in this way that the evil bhikkhu is protected and well covered behind powerful friends. And how, bhikkhus, does the evil bhikkhu know how to bribe? Here, bhikkhus, the evil bhikkhu receives an abundant supply of requisites, such as robes, alms food, dwelling, and medical supplies as needed, as he reflects to himself. If someone accuses me of something, I will settle the matter by offering him a hefty bribe and make it go away. And so it happens that if anyone accuses him of something, then he quickly settles the matter by offering him a hefty bribe and making it go away. It is in this way that the evil bhikkhu knows who to bribe. And how, bhikkhus, does the evil bhikkhu act alone while committing his crimes? Here, bhikkhus, the evil bhikkhu lives by himself in the distant borderland, where he approaches families there, living according to his secret whims, while keeping whatever he gains to himself, never willing to share what was offered to him. It is in this way that the evil bhikkhu acts alone while committing his crimes. In this manner, bhikkhus, the evil bhikkhu, while possessing these five qualities, lives by injuring and destroying himself, while being criticized and blamed by the wise, as he also accrues much demerit throughout. Samana Sukumala Sutta the most beautiful among recluses. Bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the bhikkhu becomes the most beautiful among all recluses. What are these five? Here, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu only uses whatever robes he has been offered to accept, and rarely uses one that was not offered to him specifically. He only eats alms food he has been offered to accept, and rarely eats food that was not offered to him specifically. He only uses a dwelling he has been offered to accept, and rarely uses one that was not offered to him specifically. He only takes medicine he has been offered to accept, and rarely uses medicinal requisites that were not offered to him specifically. His companions in the holy life with whom he lives mostly behave in an agreeable way towards him, whether in body, speech, or mind, and rarely, if ever, behave in disagreeable ways. Also, they usually present him with nice things and with a kind demeanor, and rarely, if ever, with things that are not. Any discomfort experienced through the body, whether as a result of bile, phlegm, gas, or a combination of all three, or any discomfort that occurs due to the changing of seasons or the climate, any discomfort that happens on account of inattentive activity or sudden movements causing acute pain, or any discomfort that occurs as a result of past kamma, all these rarely happen to him, as he seldom gets sick, and if they do occur, they are not much to him. 
Without much effort or difficulty, he quickly gains the four jhanas, which constitute the higher mind, and are pleasant states of respite to be experienced here in this very life. And he realizes for himself, with direct and experiential understanding, how the contaminants have all been destroyed in him, in this very life. As he finally attains the taintless release of the heart, along with the release through wisdom, while living the rest of his life in that state. Bhikkhus, it is by possessing these five qualities that the bhikkhu becomes the most beautiful among all recluses. Bhikkhus, if anyone must be rightfully declared as being the most beautiful bhikkhu among all recluses, it is I, for I only use whatever robes I have been offered to accept, and rarely use one that was not offered to me specifically. I only eat alms food I have been offered to accept, and rarely eat food that was not offered to me specifically. I only use a dwelling I have been offered to accept, and rarely use one that was not offered to me specifically. I only take medicine I have been offered to accept, and rarely use medicinal requisites that were not offered to me specifically. My companions in the holy life with whom I live mostly behave in an agreeable way toward me, whether in body, speech, or mind, and rarely, if ever, behave in disagreeable ways. Also, they usually present me with nice things and with a kind demeanor, and rarely, if ever, with things that are not. Any discomfort experienced through the body whether as a result of bile, phlegm, gas, or a combination of all three, or any discomfort that occurs due to the changing of seasons or the climate, any discomfort that happens on account of inattentive activity or sudden movements causing acute pain, or any discomfort that occurs as a result of past kamma, all these rarely happen to me as I seldom get sick, and if they do occur, they are not much to me. Without much effort or difficulty, I quickly gain the four jhanas, which constitute the higher mind, and are pleasant states of respite to be experienced here in this very life. And I have realized for myself with direct and experiential understanding how the contaminants have all been destroyed in me in this very life, as I have finally attained the taintless release of the heart along with the release through wisdom. It is for these reasons, bhikkhus, that if anyone must be rightfully declared as being the most beautiful bhikkhu among all recluses, it is I. Pasuvihara Sutta Living at Ease Bhikkhus, these are the five ways of living at ease. What five? Here, Bhikkhus, the Bhikkhu conducts himself with genuine loving kindness in his physical behavior towards his companions in the holy life, both in public and in private. He conducts himself with genuine loving-kindness in his verbal behavior towards his companions in the holy life, both in public and in private. He behaves with genuine loving-kindness in his mental actions towards his companions in the holy life, both in public and in private. Also, while dwelling with his companions in the holy life, whether in public or in private, the bhikkhu lives virtuously throughout, abiding by the rules that remain unbroken, flawless, unblemished, liberating one from slavery, setting one at peace, whereby they are praised by those considered to be truly wise, unmistakably leading one to collectedness of mind. Further, whether in public or in private, 
the bhikkhu lives while sharing with his companions in the holy life the view that is noble and emancipating, and by being utterly dedicated to it, his heart becomes fully released from all suffering. Bhikkhus, these are the five ways of living at ease. Ananda Sutta with the Venerable Ananda At one time, the Blessed One was living in the monastery offered by Ghosita in Kosambi. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, sat on one side and said to the Blessed One, Bhante, in what way can a bhikkhu be living at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus? And the Blessed One said, Ananda, when the bhikkhu, who is himself living with virtue, but is not affected nor has the compelling urge to remind others to also be established in higher virtues, in this way, the bhikkhu can live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus. But Bhante, could there be another way whereby the bhikkhu may live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus? There could be, Ananda, when the bhikkhu, who is himself living with virtue, but is not affected, nor has the compelling urge to remind others to also be established in higher virtues, focuses his attention on himself as he continues examining his own behavior and is not focused on nor examines those of others. In this way, the bhikkhu can live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus. But Bhante, could there be another way whereby the bhikkhu may live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus? There could be, Ananda, when the bhikkhu, who is himself living with virtue, and is not affected nor has the compelling urge to remind others to also be established in higher virtues, focuses his attention on himself as he continues examining his own behavior and not focusing on nor examining the behavior of others. And even though such a bhikkhu might not be well known, he nevertheless is not perturbed nor frustrated due to the lack in renown. In this way, the bhikkhu can live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus. But, Bhante, could there be another way whereby a bhikkhu may live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus? There could be, Ananda, when the bhikkhu, who is himself living with virtue, and is not affected nor has the compelling urge to remind others to also be established in higher virtues, focuses his attention on himself as he continues examining his own behavior and not focusing on nor examining those of others. And even though such a bhikkhu might not be well known, he nevertheless is not perturbed nor frustrated due to the lack in renown. And furthermore, without much effort or difficulty, this bhikkhu quickly gains the four jhanas, which constitute the higher mind, and are pleasant states of respite to be experienced here in this very life. In this way, the bhikkhu can live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus. But Bhante, could there be yet another way whereby a bhikkhu may live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus? There could be, Ananda, when the bhikkhu is himself living with virtue but is not affected nor has the compelling urge to remind others to also be established in higher virtues, and instead he focuses his attention on himself as he continues examining his own behavior and not be focused on nor examining those of others. And even though such a bhikkhu might not be well known, he nevertheless is not perturbed, 
nor frustrated due to the lack in renown. Furthermore, without much effort or difficulty, this bhikkhu quickly gains the four jhanas, which constitute the higher mind, and are pleasant states of respite to be experienced here in this very life. And he realizes for himself with direct and experiential understanding how the contaminants have all been destroyed in him in this very life, as he finally attains the taintless release of the heart, along with the release through wisdom. In this way, the bhikkhu can live at ease while dwelling with the Sangha of bhikkhus. Beyond this, Ananda, I say there is no other way of living at ease that is more sublime or exquisite than this. Sila Sutta Virtues Bhikkhus, by possessing five qualities, the bhikkhu becomes worthy of offerings, worthy of hospitality, worthy of gifts, and worthy of veneration with clasped hands, becoming the unsurpassed noble field of merits for the entire world. What are these five? Here, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu is accomplished in his virtuous behavior, accomplished in his collectedness of mind, accomplished in his wisdom, accomplished in his release, and he is accomplished in his knowledge and vision of release. In this way, bhikkhus, by possessing five qualities, the bhikkhu becomes worthy of offerings, worthy of hospitality, worthy of gifts, and worthy of veneration with clasped hands, becoming the unsurpassed noble field of merits for the entire world. Asikha Sutta Gone Beyond the Training Bhikkhus, by possessing five qualities, the bhikkhu becomes worthy of offerings, worthy of hospitality, worthy of gifts, and worthy of veneration with clasped hands, becoming the unsurpassed noble field of merits for the entire world. What are these five? Here, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu possesses the aggregate of virtuous behavior of one who has gone beyond the training. He possesses the aggregate of collectedness of mind of one who has gone beyond the training. He possesses the aggregate of wisdom of one who has gone beyond the training. He possesses the aggregate of release of one who has gone beyond the training. And he possesses the aggregate of the knowledge and vision of release of one who has gone beyond the training. In this way, bhikkhus, by possessing five qualities, the bhikkhu becomes worthy of offerings, worthy of hospitality, worthy of gifts, and worthy of veneration with clasped hands, becoming the unsurpassed noble field of merits for the entire world. Chatuddhisa Sutta Feeling at home in all four directions. Bhikkhus, by possessing five qualities, the bhikkhu feels at home in all four directions. What are these five? Here, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu possesses a virtuous character, practicing and being restrained by the Pati Mukha. He possesses the right conduct, while seeing danger in the slightest fault, as he keeps true to the rules he has undertaken, by keeping them alive in his heart, whether being alone or in public. The bhikkhu is also learned, remembering and applying the treasures he has learned from the Dhamma, teachings that are good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end knowing their full meaning and phrasing in words and letters that delineate the perfectly complete and pure holy life. Remembering the Dhamma he has learned, he practices it by verbally reciting and mentally pondering and investigating the treasures it contains, as he understands and penetrates into their true meaning. 
This bhikkhu is satisfied with whatever he is offered, be it robes, alms food, dwelling places, and medical requisites when ill. The bhikkhu, without much effort or difficulty, quickly gains the four jhanas, which constitute the higher mind, and are pleasant states of respite to be experienced here in this very life. And he has realized for himself, with direct and experiential understanding, how the contaminants have all been destroyed in him in this very life. Having finally attained the taintless release of the heart, along with the release through wisdom, while living the rest of his life in that state. In this way, bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the bhikkhu feels at home in all four directions. Aranya Sutta, living in the remote wilderness. Bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the bhikkhu is considered suitable to live in remote wilderness. What are these five? Here, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu possesses a virtuous character, practicing and being restrained by the patimukkha. He possesses the right conduct, while seeing danger in the slightest fault, as he keeps true to the rules he has undertaken, by keeping them alive in his heart whether while being alone or in public. The bhikkhu is also learned, remembering and applying the treasures he has learned from the Dhamma, teachings that are good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, knowing their full meaning and phrasing in words and letters that delineate the perfectly complete and pure holy life. Remembering the Dhamma he has learned, he practices it by verbally reciting and mentally pondering and investigating the treasures it contains, as he understands and penetrates into their true meaning. He lives with aroused and persevering effort, being firm and zealous not to engage in unwholesome behavior that produce unwholesome outcomes, and instead he engages in wholesome behavior cultivating wholesome outcomes. The bhikkhu also, without much effort or difficulty, quickly gains the four jhanas, which constitute the higher mind, and are pleasant states of respite to be experienced here in this very life. And he has realized for himself, with direct and experiential understanding, how the contaminants have all been destroyed in him in this very life having finally attained the taintless release of the heart, along with the release through wisdom, while living the rest of his life in that state. In this way, bhikkhus, by possessing these five qualities, the bhikkhu is considered suitable to live in remote wilderness. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.